In this video, I'm going to show you the complete process using SketchUp for CNC fabrication. SketchUp will be used as the main program to develop the model and prepare the parts for fabrication. The first step to using SketchUp for fabrication on a CNC is to design and develop the model in SketchUp. As an example, I am designing a movable base with shelving for the black tooth laser system. While developing the model, it's important to think about how the parts will be cut on the CNC machine. I'll only be using 3 quarter inch thick birch plywood for the structure, so all the parts created in the model will be 3 quarter inches thick. Additionally, keep in mind the capabilities of the CNC machine that you're using. In this case, the CNC machine has three axes and can perform 2D and 3D movements, but the end mill is always in a vertical orientation. More importantly, every part that is created in SketchUp should be made as a component. The components will not be used as a part that is intended as a repetitive part, but to be used as a way to correct errors after the prototype is built. Components will also allow me to create assembly instructions for the structure at a later time. Since this is a structure that will be composed of many parts, it is necessary to think about how the parts will be connected together. I'm electing to use screws and cross dowels since I'll be able, be able to fasten the parts together very tightly and unfasten them if necessary. Once you're satisfied with the design and you've checked and rechecked for completeness, you can start preparing the model for fabrication. Step two, make a copy of your model. You can remove all of the unnecessary items. In this case, it's the casters and the bucket that was created. The rest of it can be, manu can be fabricated. The parts need to be laid out exactly how they'll be fabricated on the machine. In this case, I'm using 4x8 sheets, so I'm going to take these parts and lay them out um, along 4x8 areas. Create a 4x8 rectangle, and then you'll use this to align all of the parts so they uh, work within the, the routing area of your, of your machine. For the parts that don't have machining operations going through the part completely, um, it's important to make sure that that side is facing up because we're going to be using that, those, uh, that geometry later on. So this side has, has all of the holes that I've created, but it doesn't go all the way to the other side. Actually, we're not going to flatten the holes. We're going to keep the holes in the, the secondary or the, uh, the final depth holes in their, in their actual location. And when we finally get to doing the machining operations, you'll see that um, those will help us in creating our um, actual depth. I'm making the 4x8 sheet a component so it's going to be easier to, to delete them later on. I'm going to have to make about five or six of these. I'll just make a few of them now. You also want to make sure that the part top is actually um, at the same level as this as this face. So just by uh, selecting part of that part that is on the top face, you can allow it to sit in this way. And this is important for the the actual machining operations. When we get into doing the machining operations, uh, we're going to use this as the as the top surface, and uh, all of the final depth holes will be at the depth they need to be. Put the parts right next to each other. Uh, we'll be separating them later, and uh, we'll be separating, separating them um, according to the bit, the bit width. At this point, you want to separate the parts space them away from each other about the width of the bit, a little bit more than the width of the bit. I'm going to go about 0.28. I'm using a 0.24 or 0.25 quarter inch bit, uh, and I want to do a roughing and finishing pass, so I need a little bit more, a little bit more width between the parts. So what I'm going to do is, it's a really simple process of just doing a move, a move on each part, and you're going to specify 0.28 for the, for the width, and now that is essentially set and every time you do a move, it'll do it at that width. Now that we have all of the parts laid out, it it's really important to save it at this point because all of these parts are still as a component 
and we're going to explode these parts so we can remove some of the geometry. So it's really important to save it at this point. We want to um, make sure that we have a file that um, if we find any errors in the prototype, if we, once we fabricate all these parts and we want to make some changes, uh, all we have to do is, is go to the actual uh, model, make the changes in the model, and the changes will reflect in these parts as long as you've created the, the components correctly in your model. Now that we have it saved, I'm going to go ahead and save it as another file type or another file name and I'm going to call this for fabrication or shelves fabrication and that will uh, allow me not not to write over the other file that I just created and in this file I'm going to go ahead and delete the model I'm going to take out the 4x8s and I'm going to go ahead and move uh, let me put them back in because I'm going to move them to the zero point this is not really that important you can do this in CAM but it's really important to get the geometry set so we can uh, easily manipulate the, those, those primitives in, in the CAM file. Okay, so we have our geometry and what we want to do is we want to um, select everything and explode all of the geometry. Okay, the next step what we want to do is we want to remove all of the 3D faces because the 3D faces causes a problem with, with, um, with CAM programs as it uh, really has um, a, a geometry that CAM really doesn't understand and it needs to have only the prim primitive primitives that um, can be saved under DXF like the circles and the lines and polygons uh, and when you take the faces out then you're able to uh, work with a document that um, is more compatible with CAM so what we need to do is we need to remove all of the faces that we can see and, and you're going to come back to uh, seeing a uh, sort of a wireframe. So the easiest way in this particular um, instance is to to get rid of uh, multiple faces at one time. Uh, we don't really need the the bottoms. We don't need these these lower faces. So I'm going to try to get rid of all those at one in one fell swoop and I'm going to use the camera parallel projection and I'm going to look at one of the sides and you can see that uh, if you take a look at it in this in this view you can actually do a selection but you don't want to go so far as to delete the, some of the um, geometry that doesn't go all the way through so I'm going to just take that I'm going to check it before I do a delete and this will also delete some of the geometry that um, is on the bottom we don't need that geometry on the bottom we only need the geometry on the very top and you'll see um, why uh, later on in, in um, when we use the cam program so I'm just going to delete that and now what we'll have is let me put it back into the other view here, perspective. You'll see that we only have the very top edge, and we'll also have some of this geometry, which we also want to get rid of. But let's go ahead and get rid of all of the uh, other 3D faces that we weren't able to do in, in the previous action. So we're just going to select them and delete them individually. This really doesn't take that long. So we've completed that. You can start to see all of the geometry that, um, that we need to take care of so it's pretty easy to, to see that. And we're just going to delete all of the faces, all, um, not the actual geometry. This is the, this is the geometry that we have left over. And we want to maintain that geometry, just delete the faces. And having these two holes right on top of each other is going to help us in, uh, when we do our cam uh, to know which ones don't go all the way through. Scan the rest of the document to make sure that we have any others. We have these over here. And the good thing about doing it this way as opposed to doing sort of a projection onto another plane is that we maintain the circle geometry. This, when it goes into CAM, this will be a circle. It won't be a, a bunch of lines creating a circle. Now we're ready to export this file as a DXF. So this is the pro version. If you don't have the pro version, there's a plugin that you can use called, uh, let's see, export to DXF or STL and I have a video on that you can um, I'll put a link in this in the description and probably uh, an annotation here showing where to find this uh, video uh, but just know that uh, when you do export using this DXF to or X STL um, export utility the circles will become a set of lines making up that circle or it'll be a polygon with a bunch of lines making up a circle and um, if you have the pro version the, uh, and using the actual export utility, which is here, export 3D model, then you will get the, the, the intended geometry. So I'm going to save this as a DXF file, um, just export it, and it'll give you a, an, an audit that informs you that it's all okay.
So now this portion is done. Now you can take the file into a, a CAM program and uh, per perform your machining operations or set your machining operations for all of your geometry. You will need to um, take all of the, the lines in your program and you're going to have to join to make uh, polygons. And in, in various CAM programs you can do this. Um, I'm going to be showing this in several CAM programs and showing you how to, how to do the join so you can end up with uh, polygons. 